Greg Hennis alongside Doug Keefe, and we are back at Beachcomber Coins and Collectibles located at 6692 Black Horse Pike in Egg Harbor Township. And you're saying, well, where exactly is that in Egg Harbor Township? If you're familiar with the old Cardiff Circle, we're right here at the Wawa that used to be at the old Cardiff Circle. We're right down the road from the Boscovs, and of course, we're right down the road from Walmart. We're centrally located right here in Egg Harbor Township. And Doug, it is great to be back here at Beachcomber Coins and Collectibles. Well, welcome back. We're great to have you. Well, I got to tell you, uh, one of the things that I always enjoy talking about when I come here is about the history of Beachcomber Coins and Collectibles. Let's talk about, this is a great story, how you actually got into this. This wasn't <laughs> my plan, I assume. No, it wasn't my plan whatsoever. It, uh, it actually occurred back in the late 60s. Uh, I had been out there buying coins and such. And all of a sudden, I found myself with a large amount of coins and no money. <laughs> now, I had a corporate job. I, I worked for Atlantic Electric, Atlantic City Electric Company. And what I did was, I, okay, I, I rented a store in Brigantine, and I would open in the evenings and on weekends. And that allowed me to, to, to get rid of some of my merchandise and to, to get some money back. Well, early 70s is when we had the Arab oil embargo. And I'm thinking, gee, here I am sitting in Brigantine and people aren't going to drive over because they don't have gasoline. So that's when the Shore Mall was going through their uh, last expansion phase when the Steinbacks was being built there. And I, I went out, I talked to the, the owner of the mall. Weak moment, I signed a lease. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm, I'm building out a store and I'm getting ready. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, you have a day job. What yeah. are you going to do? What are you going to do? So I ended up, I had to hire somebody. And uh, we opened up and uh, kept going. And uh, 1978, uh, I just lost an employee and I needed a new employee. So I hung out a help wanted sign on the front of the store. And lo and behold, my present wife answered that hey, help wanted sign. The other beachcomber. The other it? beachcomber. So uh, that's in. We were in the Shore Mall for 39 years. Uh, we would probably still be there if they hadn't knocked the Shore Mall down. Uh, we had to move because of that, and uh, we ended up, we went all over the area. We went to the Hamilton Mall, we went to this store, and lo and behold, we decided, you know, this, this is the perfect location for us. It's time to downsize. We had a 10,000 square foot store. Uh, obviously, we don't have a 10,000 square foot store anymore, and, uh, but the, the timing is right. I've been doing this 50 years, and uh, this is a little bit slower and a little bit easier to manage. Well, I have to tell you that uh, a lot of folks probably said, oh, Beachcomber started in Brigantine. You just learned that, uh, or actually at, at, at the Shore Mall, you just learned that it actually started uh, in Brigantine and mm -hmm. gradually migrated here to Egg Harbor Township. That's, and ironically, we have a satellite office in Brigantine now, uh, and we have a satellite office in Amsecan. So uh, those were, Brigantine was open on Saturdays before COVID, uh, but because of having to rearrange employees and staffing, we, we cut that down. And now we do offer uh, private appointments in Brigantine upon uh, request. We can do that, but uh, that is closed, and so is Absecon closed. And here we're focused on dealing with this when COVID. And speaking of that, uh, here's a, a very broad question. I'm sure you're going to kind of narrow it in a little <laughs> bit. So since the last time we were here, of course, last time we were here, we weren't dealing with COVID. But what has changed since COVID has, has hit, Doug? A lot has changed. Uh, and. Uh, it's not going to unchange, unfortunately. It's something that we've done a lot of soul searching of how we want to operate to maintain the safety for ourselves and for our, our customers. And, and what we're doing now is uh, we are we're more or less going to be along the lines of an office, not a retail establishment. Uh, by being an office, we're going to be similar to a lawyer's office, doctor's office, accountant's office. We request you make an appointment. It's not mandatory. You don't have to make an appointment, but it makes it easier. We are limiting the number of people in the shop. Uh, we are not allowing casual browsing, casual shopping. Uh, we will let you in for a purpose. If you have uh, something you want to purchase, uh, we've installed a, a bank type drawer window over there by the front so that you don't have to come in. We can pass it back and forth to you. Contactless. Yes, and, and, and it works very easily. Uh, people don't, don't have to come in, and they, it's, been, it's been welcomed with mixed review. There are some old timers that, you know, they want to come in, they want to look around and say, we're sorry, you know, we, we can't do that anymore. It's, it's for your safety as well as our safety. I mean, you don't know who's been in here. We don't know where you've been. We, we take people's temperature when they come in to make sure that they're, they're not feverish. And uh, 
it's working out, we think, very well. We, as you see, we've installed stanchions in here to control the, uh, the social distancing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you're not here for a purpose, we request that you, you don't come in just to look around. We've had to turn people away because they don't have a, a reason they want to be this. want to look around. Well, I'm sorry we can't do that anymore. Uh, we have a online uh, website, uh, beachcombercoinsinc.com, where we publish our buying and selling prices for the precious metals, the bullion and the silver and the coin, most coins. Uh, we have live chat where you can uh, ask a question and uh, she gets back to them to, and, and if they want an appointment she can do it or they can call. Our, our phone number 609-645-1031 is how we call to make appointments. Uh, we can make an appointment. We're here six days a week in, in this location uh, from 10 in the morning till 5 in the evening. Uh, you can make an appointment for me in Brigantine. You can make an appointment for us in Amseek, and uh, but the phone number is the same. It's all done through this location so that you don't uh, have different numbers to remember. Some other changes I know that have happened, I'll throw a couple of key points out. Number one, watches are now uh, a part of things that you do. And in addition to that, some changes with metal detectors. Yes, those are the two major, and we'll go into the basic, the, the art, what I call our bread and butter business later, but we have included now that we are purchasing watches uh, over the counter working or not working it doesn't matter that the uh, and pocket watches wrist watches what have you unfortunately there was a lot of online competition for metal detectors people would come in they'd pick our employees brain on how to use them then go home and order it online mm. and the worst case we had was somebody ordered it online came in and asked us to build it oh. and at that point in time we said you know we we can't compete with online and we're not, we can't display it, we can't talk to you about them now with COVID, we can't go through that. So at that point we said no more metal detectors. We're, we're stick with our other core business, but the, the metal detectors are no longer with us. Um, when it comes to buying gold and silver, there's a lot of different things that are involved in that. Mm -hmm. There's a process, there's a machine that you use. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you hear a lot about marks and carrots and things of that nature. Can right. you kind of educate us a little bit about gold and silver and, sure. and, and the process? Sure. The, uh, the, the marks and carrots you're speaking of are the marks that, and, that are found on gold jewelry. Okay. By law, uh, a piece of gold is supposed to be marked as to its content. The carrot tells you what the content is. Uh, pure gold is 24 carat. Okay. If you had a piece of gold that was marked 18 carat, the way to determine the percentage of gold in that particular piece is divide the 18 by 24. That ends up to 0.75. Not all carat marks are legitimate. Uh, there are people that make up uh, what we call counterfeit jewelry. They put the marks on it, might put a little gold on it, but it might only be copper underneath. And as you mentioned, we have a device up there on the front, an x-ray machine uh, that we can then put the, the piece in that machine and it'll read out every piece of metal in that wow. item and what percentage it takes up. So this is a, a, something we, we purchased and it helps the people. We had somebody in just last week who had carded gold bars. They thought and they weren't. So, so that, that machine really is, is a game changer. It exposes things that should be exposed. Exactly. And, and it really establishes a correct value. Exactly. And, and, People come in and they ask us to test their items. Well, if it's just a casual, we charge for it. I mean, that machine cost me $20,000. I can't just go test everybody's things for them and not get yeah. a return on my investment. Of course, so of course. We do charge, uh, and we've had several cases where people come in and say, oh, I know it's this. Okay, if you know it's this, we'll verify it, Char charge you ten five dollars to do it, and it isn't. So mm -hmm. and they go away not really quite as happy as they came. But that is a service that is available. It's a service, yes, okay. it is. And you, you pay for the service. Okay. Now, a lot of times you think about gold and silver and, and, and you think of, you know, United States currency, U.S. currency. What about foreign currency? How does that factor into to value and things? <laughs> well, what foreign currency, foreign coins and such are many times these are just items left over from a, a trip. Uh, French francs, Italian lira, German marks, uh, all these. They're on the euro, so those coins are worthless. Uh, so what we do is we usually, foreign coins, unless they're silver or gold, we buy them across the board at three cents each. We put them in 10 pound bags and we sell them in 10 pound bags. And they've been very popular now. 
people home, they're not working. Well, let me play through the coins. And they go through, <laughs> let me see what I find. Oh, I found a German more. Oh, I found an English penny. I found that. So it, it works out. Foreign currency is the same. Uh, they were left over from trips, and uh, we end up buying those at 10 cents a note. Uh, in bulk, and people will come in, believe me, with stacks of them. It's either relatives accumulate them. A lot of times you find uh, people whose uh, husband, or grandfather, or uncle, or whatever was in World War II. And in traveling through Europe, they, uh, they picked up uh, old French francs, old German marks, old you know, country, and they brought them home. Didn't know what to do with them. Same over in the Pacific Theater. They came of Philippine currency, China currency, what have you. And it's it really, there's not a lot of value in, in used currency like that. And we sell them basically in bulk quantity also to kids who just like to have a, a few farm, just to say, oh, I got a piece from China. Oh, I got a piece from Japan. I got this. So that's what we do with them. There's independent companies that do the coins, the cards, the currency, even comic books and what have you. Any that you're affiliated with? Yes, uh, we're affiliated with the outfit in, in Florida, NGC, that handles all of them, and PCGS, which is in, in California. For the autographs, uh, there's the main individual that we deal with, and he does the authentication of autographs. That's Jimmy Spence, Spence Authentic in North Jersey, and uh, we've dealt with him over the years. He's a personal friend of mine. He stays at our home when he comes down here. His word is gold as far as a guarantee on, uh, on this authenticity. But to get back to the grading portion of it, you send, it, you send a coin or card to these companies, they're going to look at it, they're going to have several people go over it, they're going to review it, and then they're going to determine what the grade of it is. And then they're going to encapsulate it in a piece of plastic, non-tamperable, you can't break it open, and it's going to have right on it what their determination of the grade and condition is. Uh, and that is, the argument between you and me stops at that point in time. Now the only thing we have left to argue about is price. Yeah. Because there's now an independent company who is not involved in selling cards, only gets their money from grading cards or coins or currency, has said it is this condition. Now we have to decide on a price. Now, a lot of people think of, you know, Beachcomber. They think of you or Linda. Of course, you, you two are the Beachcomber, so to speak. <laughs> but, of course, as you mentioned, you have the satellite locations. Six days a week, I imagine you have a, a pretty knowledgeable staff that is yeah. A part of the operation in addition to you and Linda and could you just talk to us about them obviously when you're not here they're your eyes and ears absolutely no they've been with me for a long time Liz has been with me for 15 years and Chris has been nine or ten Chris is my watch and comic guy uh, he's the one that does the primary but he does everything too but he specializes in the watches and the comic Liz who's been with us she does uh, the gold and silver buying as well as Chris buys but the they're both very diversi diversified, and is, they're both very knowledgeable. And, and if the, the odd case where something comes up, we're reachable. You mentioned that you've kind of downsized a little bit over the years. You went from a larger <laughs> facility at the, at the Shore Mall to this facility, you know, out of the Hamilton Mall, and so on and so forth. Does that mean that you're now limited in what you're able to buy if somebody has a, a larger uh, collection? an estate or things like that or you know how does that all play into things i can handle just about anything that the people come in if we agree in price and that's what i always say if both of us nod our head in the same direction when i've given you a price after going through everything we have a deal we don't do it on consignment if we reach an agreement on a price i pay for it right then and there there are so many areas that you cover i know one of the great things is that you're affiliated with many professional organizations that you're uh, affiliated with and, and different things. Could you talk to us about that? Right now, we're, we're associated with the American Numismatic Association, the Numismari Numismatic Guarantee Trust Company, uh, PCGS. Uh, we're, we could go on and on and on. There's just many that, and as I said, I've been in business 50 years, uh, actually going on 51. You'd be 51 years in June. Uh, because of this, we've established relationships with many organizations, uh, many groups, many companies, many other people in the business. I'm on an online network nationwide that has thousands of other coin dealers associated with it. And as a result, that I can reach out uh, across the country if I have need or if I have something that I can offer to them. Uh, because of that, it, it works out uh, very well to our benefit. Let's talk about an area that, boy, oh boy, I guess it was probably in the, the 70s and 80s really exploded. That's the sports cards and the non-sports cards. Now, let's talk about that. That is very <laughs> intriguing. You know, as a, as a kid, I have memories of, you know, getting the, 
the packs of uh, baseball cards and opening <laughs> them up, getting the stale chewing gum, kind of getting rid of that and looking to see, did I get this player and that player? And what player were you after? Uh, probably Mike Schmidt, Pete Rose in the day, and I know Pete okay. Rose was a special player for you here at uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Beachcomber Coins. Tell us why he was and then let's talk about that. Why was Pete Rose a special player? Pete Rose is a, was a very special player that uh, we had at our show in the Shore Mall. Used to have shows, right? We had shows. We were a show promoter. We ran some of the, that was our biggest show we ever ran. We had Pete Rose there. And I'll tell you, that mall was filled. That, that mall has never seen so many people in its whole existence. And we had, we had over 1,400 autographs that we sold. Wow. People. And, uh, and it, was, it was a great show when he was all done. Gave me his phone number, said, do you need anything? Give me a call. So sports cards. Uh, let's sports talk cards. about okay. where they are today in the scheme of things. Interesting. Glad you brought that up because sports cards right now are, are hot. Really? Very hot. Why? And, and people are, are locked in, not a lot to do. The production is small, and there's been a lot of interest in it. They've been going crazy. What, what are the things people can look for to determine that you know, this, this might be a really good card as far as the, the edges and things like that? What are the things they could well, kind you, of take there's, a peek there's at? The, the, the surface, mm -hmm. make sure there's no abrasion on it. I mean, it hasn't been scuffed along. The corners are extremely important. Those are the weak points on the card. And then something you have no, condition, no control over whatsoever is the centering. Uh, these things are mass produced. I mean, there was not a lot of care that went into, they were toys, they were things to play with. They weren't anything, that, they weren't an investment, they weren't the kids' college education. They were things that kids were meant to play with. And if something survived without any damage, uh, with good centering and strong corners, that's gonna be the item that's gonna be worth more than just the average one. Uh, in addition to the sports and, and non-sports cards, one of the things you touched on was some of the memorabilia and mm -hmm. some of the signatures and, mm -hmm. and you know, the company you work with that verifies it. Um, wasn't there a, a story that you shared in a previous visit where, you know, that used to be that the athletes would always just sign the stuff, but then there became that a po point where the, the manufacturers would do the mass production of the, the signatures and you never knew if they were authentic or not because they were being factory produced? Yes, and, and you can usually tell there's, a lot of the old cards had the re a replica of the signature of the player on them, but they were printed with a card. And there have been many promotions over the years where companies have, said that it was an autograph but it wasn't an autograph and and for that reason and there's the other situation is that in the in the 40s 50s 60s you used to be when you went to a ball game there was a concession there that sold souvenirs for the for the game mm -hmm. and they would have what they call team signed balls oh but they weren't they were team printed balls ah. all the signatures were printed and a quick way to tell is all the signatures are in the same color ink same dark black ink and for that reason, that you could tell that it was it was made that way. usually when a, a ball is signed by a team in the dugout, it's passed around from guy to guy, and they'll have different pens. You know, I got my own pen, and they'll sign it, pass it on. So, and there, you know, it's a mishmash of colors, and this, and and for that reason, you know, you can feel comfortable that it's real. But there were times, and Babe Ruth is a classic example of a, a signature that's been replicated by people in the dugout. The, kid, the, the bat boy, in many cases, back in the day when, ba when Babe Ruth was playing, signed Babe Ruth. Really? And was good. His wife signed Babe Ruth when they get something in the mail. The wife signed. Spence can tell who signed it in wow. those many cases. So they can actually tell if it was the bat boy or the wife. Yeah. That's can, amazing. Yeah. That is and, amazing. And obviously you want it to be the real guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We just had a Babe Ruth signature that we purchased, and, uh, and it was on a, a slip of paper. Uh, that was uh, obtained and the gentleman explained how he got it. His aunt worked in the airport and Babe Ruth was getting ready to get on an airplane and he, he wanted a drink and she told him, oh, sorry, it's Sunday, you can't, you can't sign it. the blue laws back then. And he said, oh, okay, well, I said, but would you for my whoever, would you sign? So it was like a, a slip off of a, a, a receipt that she would write up wow. taking somebody's order. And he signed it and he dated it, and then we were able to get it authenticated, and, and we were able, obviously, to resell it as a result. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, another area that has always piqued a lot of interest with collectibles are the comic books. Uh, what's the market with that as we speak today? The market is good. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in comics. Uh, we, as you remember, in the Shore Mall, we sold the current comics. We were very heavily involved in it. Uh, 
And, and a lot of that was mass produced back then too. Like they had a series called The Death of Superman, mm -hmm. where Superman died. Uh, we ordered those by the case. Yeah. And we sold them by the case. And they're not worth much more than their cover price now at this point. However, you go back into the old 10 cent, 12 cent, 20 cent comic series and some of the, uh, the superheroes. And, and those are the comics that uh, really bring some interesting prices. Uh, the number one Superman and, and usually two, the more valuable comic is the first issue of the comic, is mm -hmm. number one, first appearance. And the paper in comic books is not high quality paper. It's pretty cheap paper. So surviving through uh, the normal use and storage and attics and basements and things like that, deteriorates. they don't survive well. So it's hard to find a really pristine looking comic from back in that era. If you're that lucky, if the, the child was anal retentive and, and took good care of his stuff and put it away, then obviously something like that is going to have a, a much better value, again, condition the three legs of, of being a, a more valuable book. Another area that you're very well known for, and I'm going to let you explain it because there's a little bit of detail involved, firearms. You're an authorized firearm dealer, but what exactly does that mean as far as Beachcomber? We are a state and federally licensed dealer in firearms. We primarily are interested in, in collectible firearms, uh, World War I, World War II firearms, uh, Civil War, things of that nature. We, we have an extensive collection, but uh, we do not sell here in the shop. However, we still buy, and what we do is we are on a nation -to -nation, nationwide system of selling firearms throughout the country, transferring them to other dealers. Do you work with the uh, area police when you receive uh, things to, to purchase? Very closely. There's a, a system called RAPID. Uh, it's a nationwide system. Uh, it's, it's making its way throughout the country. It's a means of tracing items that are being sold, primarily gold, silver, coins, and things of that nature. And what we do is that we, it's all online, computer, uh, the police can check online. Any item that we purchase then is we log it in, we take the driver's license of the individual who has sold it to us, we take pictures of it, and we transmit the pictures of the item. If there's any identifying marks, initials, things of that nature, they're included in our description. Uh, for example, a, a class ring is as good as a, a fingerprint. You get wow. a class ring, your graduation initials of the person. Well, you can go back to school and say, who graduated in 1969? Yeah. And Confirm has it. those initials. Yeah. So that's, that's like a fingerprint. So those are the things that we detail. We send, as, it's, as it's purchased, we send it in online to the police. They have it at their disposal and not just the local department, but other departments. And you can track a person because if all of a sudden the person is moving things at different locations, you know that, hey, he's been here, he's been there, he's been there. Or if, if something has been reported, if that particular class ring has been reported stolen with those date and initials, mm -hmm. oh, bingo, there it is. <laughs> and there's a the person that sold it. Let's go talk to that person and see how he came about it. Last couple of minutes, Doug, a couple of things we want to touch on. Number one, Lionel Trains. We buy old Lionel collections. Uh, we buy old trains, uh, we buy the accessories, and not only Lionel, there's American Flyer. They were the number two, but, uh, but they're, they're very popular from a collectible standpoint also. Uh, we buy them, I have another employee, Charlie. Uh, we call him Choo Choo Charlie because trains are his, uh, his, his like, and as a result, he usually ends up buying them. What we find, trains take up a lot of room. Uh, especially if you're a person who has a whole layout that they've done that could take up the whole length of that counter and, 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 and then easily some. and then some. So you're getting into this situation and this is true with a lot of things that we're dealing with right now that people are of the age where they're considering downsizing, moving, moving maybe to Florida, moving, you know, this stuff isn't going with them. The, the little place they have in Florida is two bedrooms is not going to take, uh, or the condo that they're getting on the oceanfront, is not going to take this train display, it's not going to take this memorabilia display, and maybe because of security we don't want the coins down there, maybe we want to sell these to help pay for this place in Florida, which we've done a lot of that. So therefore uh, we end up buying, again, those by the box full. So let's talk about something that's going to probably change people's perspective and get them a little upset. We're going to pop the balloon, as you would like to say when it comes to Hummels and Hess trucks. <laughs> Hummels and Hess trucks. A collection is not an investment. A collection is meant to do something to make the person happy. Unfortunately, Hess trucks now, I think Linda in a, in a 
good day, we'll pay $2 each for them in wow. the box. If they're not in the box, there's no value to them whatsoever. There's just no market. And, and uh, for that reason, uh, and again, the collectors, and Hess still comes out with them every year. They come out with some new toy, different design, fire truck, police car, what have you. But they do that. And again, they're bought, but they're bought to play with, not as an investment. One of the things that I kind of wanted to focus on at the very end here is the fact that when you come here to Beachcomber and you bring in something to sell it to you, mm -hmm. you know, we've all heard the horror stories of taking it to another place and they give you a price on what the value is and then you got to leave because it's not right. They change the price <laughs> or they disappear in the back room. Mm -hmm. uh, much different atmosphere here at Beachcomber, integrity, yeah. longevity, everything's done in front of the customer. Uh, explain about how you work with that and, yeah. and explain, you know, about the fact that you may go other places and they keep changing the numbers and how that's <laughs> not really correct. Kind of like a slot machine, yeah. really, just yeah. whatever you want yeah. to do. Spin and, of the dice. And, and I tell people right off the bat, if you ever, people go other places. I'm, you know, I'm not the only place, but they go other places. If somebody, you walk into somebody with a handful of gold and they ask you what you want for it, just turn around and walk out because you have no idea what it's worth. You don't know what the weight is on the scale. You might not even know the carrot of it. The other is when if they give you a price and you say, well, thank you, no, they, you turn around and leave. So, well, wait a minute, let me reevaluate. it. That means you didn't get the best price. They're, they're, they're trying to ratchet it up. By law, we have to have posted our prices that we're paying, and those are the prices we pay. There's no question about it. And if you, somebody brings something in, they're going to see it the whole time as you're yeah. examining it or weighing right it or whatever front. the case may be? Our, our scales, the things that we have to put on the scale, are sealed by the state of New Jersey. They're inspected every year to make sure they're on, on right they're supposed to be. And that's the reason that the people come to us. They know that they're going to get the straight shot. Now in a time when we're operating on a much different scale than we have in the past, and we're limiting the people coming in and such, that we're, we want to make it so that it's as smooth an operation as possible. We have the stanchions set up to control the social distancing, and, and as a result, uh, it's better for everybody, us included. Uh, appointments are a great thing, as you mentioned. Yep. Uh, you have convenient hours six days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, give us the hours at the locations. Well, the, the hours here are six days a week, uh, 10 to 5, Monday through Saturday. At the other location, it varies dependent upon your need. Uh, Brigantine, there's, we've been doing Sundays because people, it works for Brigantine residents. We've been doing Sundays in Brigantine. Uh, I can do other times. I can do the evenings if I need to, if, if or except. But the contact is still through here. You still call this number, the 609-645-1031. They have a, a, a sheet that they log in. We, we get your, your name and your phone number, your phone number in case something comes up that we can't make it or you know, we'll, we'll let you know, we'll change it. So, uh, and again, it, 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 it's worked out very smoothly and uh, I feel that's how we're going to continue going. We're, we're not going to be a walk-in shop anymore. We're going to be an office, and it's, it's working to our satisfaction. Not everybody's satisfaction on the outside of the door there, but most people are coming along and understand what we're doing. And, of course, we want to remind folks you are now in the buying of watch business. <laughs> no more metal detectors. Uh, safety, of course, uh, throughout the COVID season yeah. here at uh, Beachcomber Coins. Once again, we are located at 66. Uh, 92 Black Horse Pike that is right here in Egg Harbor Township or right down the road from Boscov's from the Walmart. We are here at the old Wawa at the uh, what used to be the Cardiff Circle. Yep, that's right. And uh, we invite you to come on by and see the Beachcombers, Doug and Linda and their great staff. And remember, they are now here to serve you. Appointments are recommended right here at Beachcomber Coins and Collectibles. And Doug, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, and just one final word. If you have any question about something you have on hand, if we do buy it, give us a call. And the website too? And the website, uh, chat with Linda on the website. Just uh, contact us, ask a question. We'll be glad to get back to you and let you know, or answer you on the phone directly. <laughs>